Have you ever scrolled through YouTube looking for something beautiful to paint, but everything just looked too advanced or too hard to do? Well, that is why I've taken the challenge upon myself today to create something for you to paint that is not only beautiful, but achievable, even for beginners. And in this video, I'll explain three reasons how this is possible. So let's get started right now. Go grab some watercolor paper, some paint brushes. I'm using some smaller brushes today. This is a number two and a number zero round brush. And then later we'll pull out a number six. We also need some clean water, a paper towel, and watercolor paints. Now the first reason why this painting works well for a beginner is because I've chosen to paint this with a very limited palette of colors. We're only using three colors today and there will be no crazy color mixing involved. We could literally use these straight from the tube if we wanted. For my pink color, I will be using Quinault Crudon Rose. My yellow is Azo Yellow and for my green, I will be using Sap Green. But if you don't have these exact colors, please feel free to use whatever you already have on hand. But if you'd like to look more into any of these products, you can find it by clicking on the description of this video. Okay, the number two reason why even a beginner can paint this is because I've already created the outline drawing for you. Of course, you don't have to have a base drawing. You can paint without one at all, especially if your painting is simple or more loose objects. But sometimes I actually find it harder to paint that way than when I have an outline to follow. The only problem with outlines is that then, of course, you have to be able to draw and create a nice composition, which is a whole nother lesson in itself. So I've done the hard part for you. This outline is available for free to you for the first three days that this video is out, which is one of the reasons why it might be a good idea to subscribe and hit the notification button so that the next time I provide a limited time free outline, you will be the first one to know about it. But if you're watching this after the three day period, no worries. This drawing is still available for a very small cost on my Etsy shop, along with several other popular outlines. Links for the free PDF or purchasable PDF are available in the description of this video. All right, enough talk. Let's get to painting these beautiful orchids. Once as you have the outline printed out, you can then use a light table or even just a window at home to trace the outline onto your watercolor paper. Then if you'd like, tape down your paper with some artist tape. Now the third reason even a beginner can paint this is because I will go through this painting with you step by step. I try to describe the process as best as I can as well as show close-up views so you can see exactly what is happening. First, because I'm wanting these flowers to be a nice light pink color, let's take some water and water down this pink color just a little bit more. Then I'll put some of that color on this first petal and then again add more water by dipping my brush in the water and using the wet number two brush to spread the color to the rest of the petal. This extra bit of water is just going to dilute and soften that color even more as well as help it spread out. Then when the petal is full of color and while it is still wet, I'll take just the tip of the brush and add in some darker hints of pink just along the outer edge of the petal you'll notice that that color will slightly start to spread downward. Now rinse your brush off and take some Azo Yellow and apply a little bit of that to the innermost part of the petal, again allowing it to spread into the pink area. Now because watercolor paint is so good at spreading while it's wet, I'm gonna skip painting the petals right next to it until it is dry. So I'll move on to this petal here. We will paint this in the exact same way as we did the first. This is just a little bit of a closer view so you can see exactly what to do. So again, we'll start by applying some light pink color, then we'll continue to spread that color through the rest of the petal by getting extra water on our brush. Then while the paint is still wet, add small touches of pink on the outer edge of the petal and small touches of yellow on the inner part of the petal and let it spread. Now let's go ahead and do that exact same technique on these two other open orchids. Now keep in mind, painting something detailed like this orchid can take a little bit of time, especially if you're a beginner. This is probably one of my longer tutorials because I want to make sure you can see every step. 
But one of the good things about painting something like this is that because it has outlines and separate little sections that you can focus on one at a time, you can always walk away from it and take a break and then come back to it again later. This type of painting doesn't require you to sit down and do it all at once. And I have to say, it will be worth it in the end. I think that you will love what you are going to be able to create today. But if you do start to feel overwhelmed, just remember, one section at a time. When those first two petals are dry, now we can paint the petal that is in between the two. This will be painted in a similar way as before, but instead of putting the extra pink along the outer edge of the petal, it will actually be painted on the inside middle area alongside the first two. This will give it the look of separation and shadow so it appears to be behind the other two. Something else you can try if this painting seems too hard or too overwhelming to paint, and actually I did this myself when I was testing out the colors and the techniques for this painting, I just drew, or you can trace, one of these orchids over and over again like five times. Here I'll post a picture of what I'm talking about up on the screen. Anyway, basically I just practiced painting this several times on a practice piece of watercolor paper until I felt I had it right. So feel free to do that before you jump right into this final painting if you need to. Now we'll paint these two bottom petals again in a similar way, but this time the dark pink will be on the top area to create a shadow spot from the petal above it, and the yellow will be more near the middle and bottom area. So while we paint this, I'm going to tell you one of my secrets. Since I do so much drawing and painting, I am always looking for and taking pictures of things for my references. Well, this time of year is absolutely the best for amazing flower references because not only are flowers growing in yards and fields, but in the greenhouses. I get some of my best flower references by just wandering around in a greenhouse. So there's my secret tip for you on how to get a good flower reference. Now all that's left for these three main flowers is the centers. For this part, the pink is going to be painted on the outside areas and the yellow will be painted on the inner areas. Now, we do want the center to be slightly darker in value than the outer petals, so you don't need to water down your paint quite as much as before. Also, as a side note, for the majority of this painting, I've been using the number two round brush. In fact, I'm still using the number two, but these areas are pretty small, so if they feel too small for the number two, feel free to switch over to your size zero brush. All right, well done. The three main flowers are complete, except for a little bit of detail work that we will paint at the very end. So now it's time to paint the rest of the flowers. We're gonna start with just one very light pink petal on each of these remaining flowers. These will probably be the lightest petals on these flowers, and I'm not going to add any dark pink or yellow to these first ones. You will also notice that I'm going to be skipping and jumping from flower to flower so that I can continue to paint while the previously applied paint is drying. For these next petals, we'll paint a very slightly darker pink than before and maybe add just a touch of yellow to the inner area. For this little flower here, we are really only seeing the back side of it, so I'm going to go ahead and paint that a slightly darker pink, but I'm not gonna add any yellow. These next two petals will also only just be painted with pink, but I might add in just a touch of darker pink in some of the corners to create the look of shadow and help it to stand out from the petal right next to it. This last petal is similar to one we've done before with a slightly darker pink and just a touch of yellow in the inner area. At this point, I'm just gonna continue adding these petals one at a time until each flower has been completed. The biggest tip I can give you for painting the rest of the flowers is to paint each petal slightly different than the one it's sitting next to. For example, if you have a lighter colored petal, make the one next to it darker and vice versa. Have some of the petals be painted with pink only and then let some of them have touches of yellow added to the centers. Just make each petal special and stand out in its own way. 
I also need to say, as far as the yellow color goes, the three large flowers in the center should have the most amount of yellow compared to any of the other flowers on the page. This yellow is gonna help keep those as the focal point of the painting. So don't add too much yellow to the rest of the flowers. All right, if you're painting with me at home, then you know that painting all these flowers can take a little bit of time, but I hope that you're happy with how your painting is looking so far. The good news is that all we have left to do is the greenery. So let's freshen up our sap green and add some more azo yellow to our palette and we will finish this painting off. Painting in the greenery is similar to the flowers in that once as you've learned the technique on one, you'll be able to paint them all. So we'll start by adding yellow to the buds and the tops of the branches. Then we'll go back in while it is still wet and add in some green on the bottoms of the buds and the branches. So we're basically doing a half and half color thing where they will hopefully blend together where they meet in the middle. If you're finding that they are not blending and you have a harsh line between the two colors, take a clean wet brush and rub that hard line with the bristles and blend them together with a little bit of water. Now, if you are a beginner and it's just too hard to get your colors to blend using this technique, please feel free to just use one color. Use the green and don't add in any of the yellow. Also, you might notice that I'm skipping some of the larger buds right now, but don't worry, we'll come back to them in just a minute. While we work on painting this, let me post my reference picture that was the inspiration for this piece. This little pot of orchids was so pretty. I haven't really seen orchids quite like this before. There were tons of little branches and flowers and buds all over it. I did change the color though. These were sort of a light yellow peach color, but I wanted to do mine pink. But that's one of the joys about painting. You can pick whatever color you want. Also, if you're finding that your green is not quite dark enough, you can always go back in and add in just a touch more to that one side. Now, when the main stems are all done, I'm gonna go back in and finish off some of those larger buds. They're basically gonna be painted in the same way, mostly with yellow and then with touches of green at the base of the bud and the stem. There are two or three larger buds on this painting that I might even add just a touch of paint to as well. I didn't think these last buds out very well in terms of drying, so while I let that last bud dry, I'll paint some yellow on the little nodes or notches that are on the stem, and then I'll go back and finish off that very last bud. Okay, we are so close to being done here. The last thing to paint on these orchids are the leaves at the base. I will be using a wet on wet method and we will only be painting on one half of the leaf at a time. So start by getting the first half wet with water, then apply some dark green first along that edge and then spread it through to the rest of the leaf, leaving the other edge open for some yellow to be added in. Hopefully those colors will touch and blend together slightly and then if you need to, go back in while it's still wet and add a little bit more green along the edge to darken it up just a little bit more. Now go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of the leaf after the paint is dry on the first half. Something else I forgot to mention is that because the leaves are a large painting area, I have switched to a larger size of brush. I am using a number six round. Now you can paint with a smaller brush, but it will take a little bit longer to paint. And because of that, it might show some streaks or brush marks. Okay, this next and final step is optional. We're going to add in some detail work or veins to the flowers and leaves. So let's move back to the size zero brush and using some very, very light or watered down pink paint, we'll paint some very thin and very light vein lines along the petals. I can't emphasize enough that these need to be so light in value that they are barely seen. Otherwise, they will become too overpowering and instead of being an accent, they will become the focus. To help keep your lines thin, after you've got a small amount of paint on your brush, take your paper towel and touch it to the side of your brush and this is going to take off any excess paint or water. 
most of the vein lines will be on these three big main flowers with only a few hints of veins on the other flowers. This is going to help emphasize and set apart the three open flowers as the focal point. Then we'll add some very light green vein lines to the leaves. Again, we just want a hint of these and they will spread out long enough to cover the length of the leaf. If you're feeling nervous about doing this step, you can just skip this. The flowers still look good without it. And believe it or not, we can call this orchid painting done. I hope you had some fun painting with me today and at the very least enjoyed watching the process. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.